On this episode of Mad Ginger Customs, we're going to give you guys a sneak peek at the brand new Simder SD5010 Pro. All right, we're back with another review. Our friends over at Simder, uh, they sent us an SD5010 Pro. And you say, Dave, what is an SD5010 Pro? I'm going to tell you. Now, this is a multi-process unit. It is very small, compact. It's lightweight. It is a MIG welder. It is a lift start TIG welder. It is an arc welder. It is a plastic stapler. I'm going to explain that. And it's a soldering iron. So if you're a home hobbyist, this thing may have a lot of functions that you find useful. We absolutely love our Simder 4050 Pro, our SD4050 Pro. That's like a plasma. It does like all these things. This is kind of the little brother, brother to that. Like I said, this is a, an inexpensive way to get yourself into a hobby welder that is going to do a myriad of things that could be useful either around the shop, around the house, or around the farm. So let's get right into it. So right off the bat, this thing's a MIG welder. It is a flux core MIG welder. You don't need gas for it. You can use this thing outside in the wind. You can use it with a fan on you. It comes with this torch. Easy to set up. You're gonna just go to your uh, local welding supplier, order some online. You can get it right from Simder, or you can get it any of the usual suspects, Amazon, eBay, uh, wherever you order your welding stuff. And uh, you're gonna just get the small, like two pound spool of flux core in the size that you want. Obviously comes with a ground clamp. Comes with a stinger for arc welding. The different part of this welder which is more the hobby part of this welder, is this also comes with the option of a soldering iron. And it comes with multiple soldering iron tips. Let me show you those. And this is cool because I've used this and I know how cool this is. This is what's called a plastic stapler. So it has a heated piece of wire and you can fix broken plastic pieces with this. So you can fix bumpers for cars, plastic bumpers. Instructions. And it comes with an entire complement of plastic staples. So if you got that split bumper from your 18 year old kid hitting a guardrail like I do, you can stitch that thing back together. So we're gonna get right into it. On this review, I'm gonna do real world repairs with this machine. I'm not just gonna lay down some beads on some uh, flat stock. We're actually gonna put this thing to work fixing stuff around the shop that I need fixed. This unit is a 110 and a 220. It comes with a 110 plug, and if you're gonna run it on, a, on an extension cord, I would suggest you have a very heavy extension cord. Let's look at the ratings on the back. This may be hard for you to see because the GoPro doesn't really zoom in well. I'm gonna read that off to you. So, in the MIG welder configuration, this thing will draw up to 40 amps, giving you 115 amps at 17 or 19.7 volts. 100% duty cycle, this thing's 89 amps. At 60%, it's 115 amps. That's at 110 volts. If you go with the 220 adapter, which you can buy separately, this thing pumps it up. That gives you 140 amps at 60% and 108 amps at 100%. And that gives you also 40 amps under the 220. For TIG, it's 20 amps draw either way, 110 or 220, gives you the full complement of the unit. So it's um, 140 amps on the TIG. Stick, 20 amps, 20 amps as well. Same situation, 140 amps or 115 amps is the 60%. If you're running at 100%, you're 108 amps, 89 amps, it's 115. And uh, it, with the soldering, the max is 36 amps at 110 if you got it turned all the way up. And then at 220, you're at 22 amps. We're obviously not gonna run to that high soldering anything. So um, just keep that in mind when you are selecting a circuit and a circuit breaker to plug this into. It's got a cooling fan on the back, on off switch on the back. It is basically packaged very similar to the 4050 Pro. This is the 4050 Pro that we use pretty much all the time. That thing's a juggernaut. This thing's much smaller, very compact. Everything's easy to get out of the front. Tells you soldering iron, hot stapler. This is for your switch. This is your MIG. And this is you're gonna flip flop if you're doing TIG, uh, MIG, 
or you're doing arc welding. It's actually pretty simple. I threw a roll of 030 flux core wire in it. We're going to feed it through and uh, let's fire it up. Do we want to, do you guys hate when you have this, you don't peel it off. Do you guys peel this off? I always peel these off, but you probably shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, it's so satisfying to peel that off. Everyone in the comment section is like, Dave, don't take it off. <laughs> and I know. All right, here we go. We're going to fire it up. It automatically knows it's 110 volts because it is an auto switching unit. It's on hot stapler at 20 amps, right? You can go up and down. Do you need 20 amps? Probably not. So then soldering on and off, basically it tells you that you can turn it on and off with the button. And up here, you're gonna have your process button. So you can hit it. It's gonna tell you your soldering iron. Now this is gonna tell you your actual Fahrenheit output of your soldering iron. So you can turn it up and down and this turns it on and turns it off. So when the lightning bolt is on, that means you're heating and then you can turn it off. So basically you can set this thing into a soldering rig. Stick weld, 117. That's the maxed out on 110. We will not run it that high because we don't need to. Probably 88 amps because we're gonna do some 330 seconds with it. Uh, this is lift TIG, so you can turn up your lift TIG to wherever you need to be. It's obviously going to regulate you down because you are 110 volts. One more click gives you your flux. Now, there's a couple different things going on here. It says flux. I know you can't see it because of this camera. It says 0 0.8. Hit it again. It says flux 0 0.9. And then you can adjust and you can actually adjust your voltage offset in case you need it a little hotter or a little colder or you like this the wire speed up and down a couple things i want to tell you you're like dave it only says 0.08 if you guys want to run 0.023 that's a very small flux core wire through this machine and you're like oh it should say 0.6 don't worry about that just get the correct tip and the correct roller wheel, which you can buy as an option, and just run it on 0.8, and it'll it'll weld just fine. And then you can adjust from there. Just a little heads up for you. So I think the first thing we're going to set up on this is the uh, soldering iron because I got something to fix. So let's fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to soldering iron. It says it right at the bottom. I'm not sure that we need to be up that high with with the with the voltage now this comes with an entire set of tips so if you like a flatter tip or if you want it to melt um, plastic you could also melt plastic i have a tendency to go with a chisel tip that's just what i like this is this easy to change you basically just unscrew it this becomes loose you take this out you change the tip to this. These tips are readily available. Right back on you go. So we're going to plug this directly into here. This is indexed. You can only put it in one way. And we snug her down. Guys, don't crank these things. You'll bust them. We're going to turn this thing on and let it heat up. So we're going to say soldering iron on. And this thing's going to heat. What we have here is a float charger. Now, we have a lot of batteries at Maginger Customs on a lot of stuff, and this is like a cheap Harbor Freight one where it broke off. So what I noticed is, hey, they got a whole other side that you can solder to. So in spending, instead of spending the money to buy a new one, let's fix the one we got. Make sure that's nice and clean. Get that nice and hot so we get good adhesion. Sorry for my hands, guys. And that's it. We click it off. So it's not heating anymore. And we're fixed. We got our charger back. So that's the soldering function. Let's move on, plastic stapler. Up next, this is a Jeep dashboard. I have not put this back in the Jeep because it is broken. And it's broken in a couple spots. But most notably here, see this crack? This thing's just pulling away. 
So we are gonna take the opportunity with our plastic stapler to repair this spot. Let's fix it with the SD5010 Pro. All right guys, this is why they call it a hot stapler. So basically what you're using is shaped like a staple. And what this does is this heats up and allows you to melt into plastic, give it a turn, let it cool back down and you pull it out, and then the metal stays in the plastic. Now what Simder did was they gave you a full complement of different style, quote, staples. I prefer these wiggly ones for long cracks. If you're joining two pieces together, this is kind of a straight across. They also have the inverted in case you have a piece that's a peak and you need to go on top of it. And these are for like a right angle, so you'd go like this, right? So this would fit in a corner like here if this was cracked. So I think our weapon of choice today is gonna be the Wiggler. And we're gonna set the machine up to do that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the function button and we're gonna go find hot stapler. So we got the hot stapler plugged in. This thing does have an on off button. So basically when you put the staple in it, don't hold the button down, you burn yourself. The way this works is you wanna put these in here. Now you don't wanna bury them in this or they're stuck. You wanna make sure this slides nice and easy, right? And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna be on hot stapler mode and then we're going to use this to melt into here. So we're going to hold the button down. Actually, watch this thing smoke. This thing off the rip, really hot. I'm actually going to turn it down because I don't think it needs to be that hot. <laughs> and then we're going to go right into our plastic piece. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull the trigger. We're going to set it in. We're going to give it a little twist. And that's it. We're going to let off. And be very mindful that you're not burning your hands, guys. That's it. Let it cool and lift up. Oh, it's already strong. See, look at it go. See? How many do you really need? Probably one underneath. I want to do one more up here because I think it's cracked up here. So let's grab another wiggler. And we're going to go here with it. I'm gonna turn, and we're gonna hold. And we're gonna lift. That is literally rock solid. Rock solid. And we're gonna put one in here. Twist a little bit and that's it. Let it cool guys, don't pull them right back out. Let them cool down. With your finger off the button. And that solidifies it. That is legit fix look at this look how strong that is so when you're done and cool you just go through with some angle cutters and you clip them all off wear safety glasses guys when you do this because these things will fly up in your face that's it now what i normally like to do is i like to take the flap wheel and just sand down these little pins that are left that is a solid repair. This thing is solid and ready to be put back in service. That's how you use a hot stapler. Let's move on to the next process. We have a bike rack that is a cheap bike rack. And when we have our bikes on it, it bounces and bounces and bounces. And the hole is all walled out. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to weld it together here. All right, very standard setup. You know, quarter turn lugs. You guys are used to these things, you know. You bounce that function button around till you hit stick right up there. About 86 amps. That should be good. I got some 7018 right here. Or I got some 6013, like a farm rod. My buddy's like an arc welder, pipe fitter. He goes, what the hell do you have 6013 for? He's like, that's farm rod. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what the hell it's used for. So anyway. I'm not an arc welder, so if I can do this, you guys can absolutely do this. So let me set you up and we're gonna give it a blast. Well, not bad for a scrub.
I'm a horrible stick welder, guys, but that's pretty good. Let's blast it all the way around. I mean, that thing is rock solid, boys. Let's build some more bracing for it. But we're gonna use the MIG function. All right, we got this unit set up to MIG weld. I don't think we're gonna need that many amps, but okay. Maybe 90 amps would do it. We are going to try to make this little bike rack a little bit more rigid. Now we're just trying to do stuff you guys would do at home. So I got a piece of scrap and we're gonna angle it up. And you're like, Dave, why wouldn't you cut it nice? Well, this gives me all this real estate to weld. We're gonna paint it. You know, a grinder and paint makes you the welder you ain't. So uh, let's get this thing up on the table and let's try to see how uh, this MIG welder works. A little extra paint. Woo! It's a hot one. Like seven inches from the midday sun. Is that how it goes? I don't know. We're gonna drag this. I know mid guys are like, don't drag it. No, we'll push it. We are at the portion of the show where we are going to set this thing up to TIG weld. So we're going to get into lift TIG mode. Lift TIG is when you touch it, lift off, start going. Now, this is a manual valve TIG torch. Let me show you this thing. So you have to turn your gas on first before you start TIGging because you're not going to have any gas. Uh, I'm using CK laser tungsten. I'm trying this out. Never used it before. Uh, six cup. Pretty standard stuff, I guess. And um, we won't go heavy on the amps, and we'll uh, we'll see how she does. So we're gonna turn our valve on first. We're flowing gas. Gonna put our helmet down, and we're gonna lift and then lift up. There we go. We're just gonna walk our cup down. Adding filler as we go. If you guys can acetylene weld or braze, you can TIG weld. I promise. The smoke is from the powder coat. The flames are from the powder coat. I like it, boys. I like it. We're going to tack the other side in. And then we're going to take the clamps off and go to town. Now regulate your hand speed. Look at that bead, guys. This machine actually ticks beautifully. The arc stabilization is actually really good. Really love that thing. That's, that's really good. I'm going to do the rest of it. All right. Let's get over on this side here. All right. Gas on first. So you got gas. You got to have gas flow. And then you're going to lift and pull off. You're going to touch it and pull off. Never mind the powder coat on fire. And then guys, turn your gas back off. That's, you know, that's not cheap. Save, save your money. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this review. So wrapping it up, what do you get? You get a flux core MIG welder that is also an arc welder, that is also a lift start TIG welder, 
but it's also a soldering iron for those electronics and it's also a hot stapler for fixing plastic. See plastic bumpers, you watch me fix a dashboard for an old Jeep CJ. We fixed an old, we fixed a bike rack. I showed you multi-processes, right? This thing did all of that I showed in this video, 110 volts. Now, if you get the adapter that goes from 110 to 220, so you can go into an adapter plug, you open up a larger capability with this machine with more amperage available on every process. Almost every single whip component, MIG whip, ground, arc stinger, TIG, everything, six feet plus of cabling, right? It comes with the 120 cord. It is internally cooled as a cooling fan comes on. You saw it, it's got a nice display. It's actually really easy to use. So what do you need? You need some, some TIG items to get started. If you want a TIG, you're gonna need a bottle, you're gonna need a regulator, you're gonna need a TIG package. Uh, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna do MIG welding, all you need is flux core MIG wire in an appropriate size for the machine. So it's either 0.8 or 0.9, which is third, you know, 030 or 035. If you're gonna do soldering, they actually give you solder with it. They give you hot staples if you wanna fix some bumpers with it right away. They also give you some stuff that comes with this. This is a 15% off gift. It gives you a code on the back and you can get, you know, it has a lot of items here. It has like helmets and consumables and wire and all that. It also has this scan. So it says, you know, this is your membership you get the machine, you register the machine, gives you monthly discounts, gives you, you get, you get a, a free redeem gift when you actually do this. And then you, you earn from referral. So if you guys do this kind of thing, you get this, you tell a buddy, maybe they give you a referral bonus. That's what it says. In the description of this video, I'm gonna give you a link. This is a Kickstarter item. If you don't know how Kickstarter works, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding type of environment where if they get X amount of people, in, on, on board with it at a certain dollar amount they basically go move ahead with it they've already done that i'm just telling you you guys need to get in on this early if you get in on this on day one it's discounted so i heard it's like 170 bucks on the first day it is dirt cheap on the first day this is well worth that and certainly significantly more. Get in on the Kickstarter, get in my link. I'm also gonna give you the link for the Simder 4050 Pro because we use that a lot and I love that thing. You guys watch me do this. Uh, a lot of it, you know, the arc welding, stuff like that, I don't do a lot of, but honestly, the machine was easy to use. The TIG I'm pretty good with, that's a learning curve for a lot of people, but if you can actually uh, acetylene weld or if you can braze, you can TIG weld, I promise you, you can. Jump in on the Kickstarter, hit these guys up on social media. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram. You know, hit us up, Mad Ginger Customs, Facebook and Instagram, guys. And guys, you watch me do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.